Hi everyone, I'm Rajeshree Mandavgane and the title of my talk is Webhooks for Automated Updates. So just a little introduction. I graduated last May from NC State and then I moved to California to work as a software engineer. So it's been a year and a half of me working in container orchestration and Golang and I'm really liking it. Uh, I got introduced to Kubernetes through one of my projects at work just a few months back. So I still consider myself kind of new to it. And this is also my first ever talk at a tech conference. And at the end, I'll try to leave a few minutes for any questions you may have. And yeah, you can, uh, for, like my Twitter handle is Rajeshree underscore 28 and my uh, GitHub handle is mrajeshree. So I work at this very cool startup called Rancher Labs. Rancher is a complete container management platform. Some of you might have heard of it before. And uh, we are fully open source, so you can check out our code on GitHub at Rancher. So the goal of today's talk is to set up a continuous deployment pipeline to your Kubernetes cluster. So why do we need this? Now say you're running the V1 version of one of your apps on your cluster. Then you made some changes to your code and now it's time to update your app. So typically it would involve a few steps such as you would have to, well, get your code uh, pushed, merged. Once that is done, you will have to build a new version of your code. Once that build is successful, you will go ahead and then update your app in the cluster. So now, if this process of updating your app is a frequent one, doing all these steps manually will get really time consuming. And we don't need to do that. If we can automate all these steps with the help of a pipeline, you know, that looks something like this. So this is how it will work. Uh, you do any code changes and push them to say GitHub. Now that should, by itself, trigger the build of a new image tag on some image registry. Then this image registry should be able to notify us with all the information of the newly built tag. Now usually such notifications about some events that have happened are handled via webhooks. And so we need to use some image registry that has this webhooks feature. Then we need to develop some piece of code that can actually receive this webhook, then uh, retrieve the newly built tag from that webhook information, and then actually do an update uh, to our app running in the Kates cluster. So this piece of code that receives the webhook and updates our app, I'm going to refer to as the webhook receiver for the rest of the session, and we'll see how we can use it. So before that, I just want to very quickly go over two Kubernetes resources that I'll be using for this demo. Uh, the first one is a pod. A pod is the smallest deployable unit in Kubernetes, and it consists of one or more containers that are tightly coupled. Each pod gets assigned a unique IP address that is shared by the containers within it. But pods are ephemeral, meaning if a pod goes down or if the host it is scheduled on goes down, then uh, Kates won't know that it has to reschedule it again. And that's why we don't run our applications directly on a pod in the cluster. We instead use a deployment, like the Kates deployment resource, to manage the life cycle of these pods that we want our app to run on. So what the deployment resource does is, it takes as input the desired state of your app, uh, which includes the image to be used for your app and the number of pods you want to run, and then it tries to uh, make the actual state same as the desired. But along with the image and number of pods, you can also specify the manner in which you want to update your application using this deployment resource. Now, in DevOps, there are various strategies to update your app, and they are referred to as upgrade or deployment strategies. So we need to choose one of these strategies. And that's why we are going to take a look at some of them. The first one is blue-green strategy. Now in this, if you want to update your app to a newer version, you have to bring up an identical production environment for the new version of your code. And once this new environment works as expected, you can just get rid of the older one. So this strategy guarantees zero downtime during the update, and it also provides a way to roll back. 
Let's see how. Um, in this strategy, only one environment will be live and handling all the requests at any time. So at first, the blue environment is the live environment. Then we did some code changes, so it's time to update to the newer version. And that's why we bring up the green environment to run the new version. Now once this green environment is fully deployed and tested, we can start using it by just configuring the load balancer to start sending requests to that instead. So now we are running the new version. But if you come across any problems with this and would like to go back to the previous, the older version, you can just do that by making the blue environment as the live environment. But once all the problems are fixed and you see that the green environment, like the new code, is working just as expected, you can just get rid of the blue environment. So now we finally have updated to the new version that was running on the green environment, and we did this with zero downtime. But there is some cost associated with doubling the resources for the environment, and that can be one disadvantage. The next strategy we'll look at is the recreate strategy. Now in this, if you want to update your app to a newer version, any, old, any instances that are running the older version of your code need to be removed first, and only then can you create instances running the newer version. Now this is because uh, some apps, like for some apps, the old and new versions of the code cannot be run at the same time. One example can be if you're doing some data transformations for supporting the new version of your code. And this is how this strategy works. So at first we have three instances, both running version v1. And now it's time to update to the version v2, new code. So all three instances undergo the update at the same time. So as you can see, there are no instances available to serve any requests which means during this update, there will be downtime incurred. And once the update is done, we go to version v2, and the instances are up and running again. So in this strategy, we didn't have to double any resources, so there was no extra resource utilization, but there was downtime incurred, and we don't usually want that. The third and the last strategy we look at is the rolling update strategy. Now, even rolling update, just like the blue-green uh, blue strategy, guarantees zero downtime. And it does so by only updating a certain percentage of instances at any given time. So always there are a few instances that are running the older version of your code. And yeah, for using this strategy, your app must be able to support the old and new versions of the code at the same time. But unlike the blue-green strategy, rolling update does not require any additional instances for zero downtime, because this is how it works. So at first we have two instances, both running version v1, and now it's time to update to v2. So the instance two undergoes the update first. And in the meanwhile, instance one is still up and running the old version of your code and serving all the requests. Once instance two is done updating to v2, instance one undergoes the update. And again, we have instance two up and running, this time the new version of our code. Once the whole update is done, we have both the instances processing all requests and running version v2. So as you see, we have updated to v2 and we had no downtime during this. Also, no extra resource utilization. So how do we use these strategies in our uh, like K8s cluster? So the deployment resource that we looked at earlier, let's just specify one of these strategies. Right now it has two options, one for rolling update and one for recreate. Now for my app, I want to choose the rolling update option. This is because not only does it guarantee zero downtime, but I just need to specify the rolling update option in my deplo deployment resource pick and Kubernetes will take care of the entire orchestration logic of that update. I, I won't have to do anything related to the implementation of that. So this is how I can specify the rolling update strategy. This is a sample manifest. I hope everyone at the end can see on the left of the screen. And over here in the spec field, spec is what accepts the desired state of your app. 
Under that, you can see strategy, and I've provided type as rolling update. And you can slightly manage this by these two fields, max unavailable and max surge. So max unavailable, as the name suggests, is the maximum number of pods that are allowed to be unavailable during this update, which uh, we want to be, say, one. And max surge is the maximum number of pods that are allowed to be scheduled above the desired number of pods. So if the replicas or the desired number of pods is three and max surge is one, we can have four pods scheduled during the update. So how do we trigger this rolling update for our app in the cluster? Now, there are ways to do it. You can do it manually. You can run these commands. The first one is set image. So in kubectl set image, you just need to provide the new image that you want your app to update to. And that's it. It will update your app. And it will use the rolling update strategy because that's what we have provided. And the second command is kubectl edit. It will open up your deployment resource in an editor. And it will show you the in, like, internal representation of it. And you can go there and manually change your image, and that's it. It will update the app. But again, running these commands manually when you want to update your app, we don't want that because we want to update, sorry, I mean automate our continuous deployment pipeline. So let's automate it. The webhook receiver code that I spoke about earlier when I was showing the pipeline diagram, we are going to use that to automate this process as well. So let's go back to our pipeline diagram and get the different components in place. The image registry that I'm using is Docker Hub because Docker Hub has the automated builds feature, meaning I can integrate it with any of my code repositories and when uh, some code is pushed, it will trigger the build of a new image tag. Docker Hub also has the webhooks feature that is needed for our webhook receiver code. So what exactly will this webhook receiver do and where will it run? So the webhook receiver will consume all the information that is sent to us by the Docker Hub webhook. From that, it will find the image tag that was just pushed. And then using this image tag, it will patch our Kate's deployment resource via an API call. So, um, I hope you all can see the screen. Yeah. So the Docker Hub webhook call, it's an HTTP POST request with a JSON payload that looks like this. So in our webhook receiver code, we need to expose an API endpoint that can accept this POST request and the JSON payload with it. Now from this, our webhook receiver needs only two fields to know which image was pushed, uh, image was built, I mean. So if you see, um, yeah, under push data, you can see the field tag. And under repository, you can see the field repo underscore name. And these two fields combined give us the full image name along with the tag that was just built. And then our webhook receiver code will make a patch API request, including this image in the patch body, to the Kubernetes deployment resource. Now for making this patch request or any API request to our cluster, we can use any of the existing uh, Kates API clients. There's one client for Golang, one for Python, so you can just use any that you want. And, oops. So now, where will we run this webhook receiver code? It, it can be run anywhere. Like you can have it running on say AWS Lambda or you can somehow run it within the cluster or you can create a separate microservice which can do this for you. But Rancher already has a framework for such webhook receivers in place. And it's a Go microservice. Uh, so it provides with webhook callback URLs which when triggered do some predefined actions. And the reason I'm going to use the Rancher's existing framework is that it runs out of the Kates cluster. So that means I'll, even if I have multiple Kates clusters running, I can create the callback URLs for each of them with, uh, with using the same microservice. 
So this is what the framework looks like. Uh, in the code, we are referring to re uh, the receivers as drivers. And every receiver or driver that we add needs to implement the webhook driver interface. Now these functions are uh, just to make sure that the webhook is fully functional. For example, validate payload will take as input, uh, in our case, what deployment I want to update. And execute will actually execute the API calls to update that deployment after it receives the Docker Hub webhook. And yeah, so I have added the new driver for the deployment update. And if you want, you can just check out the code. I've given the link to that repository. So now let's go back to this diagram and see what we have using the webhook. So first of all, the user will make a request to get a callback URL. And our webhook framework or the webhook receiver will give this generated callback URL. The user will then add it to Docker Hub as a webhook. Now going back to the continuous deployment, once this initial setup is done, user will make some code changes and push them to GitHub. Now this, because of Docker Hub's automated build, will trigger the build of a new image tag. Then Docker Hub will notify us using the webhook. The webhook framework in response will trigger the update to our deployment. And finally, our app gets updated. So now it's time for a demo. Yeah, so uh, this is my Kates cluster running. Let's go to the dashboard. Over here, you can see I've already created a deployment called Cube R Update. Uh, I'll just show you what that is. Uh, can everyone see the screen? Or I think I'll just increase the. Oh, I can't. Yeah. Maybe. I'll just use the dash o flag to get a detailed description of it. Okay, so if you scroll up, the image that I've provided for my app is M Rajashtri Cube, and I'll show you what that app is doing. And I've exposed port 9001. Now, under strategy, I've provided uh, type as rolling update, and max surge is one, max unavailable is one meaning at the most only one pod will be unavailable and at the most four pods can be scheduled during the update. So now, uh, let me just show you the pods that are currently running for this deployment. You can see these are the three pods running for it and yeah, the status is running and they were all created some time back, like three hours back. So now, when I actually update my app, new pods should have been created in their place. And when we do the cube curdle get pods again, we'll see that they are quite new. So let me just show you what my app is doing. Along with the deployment, I'd also created a service uh, to expose it. So, so my app is like a very simple Golang app. All it does is print some message. And right now it's printing this message. This is an older release. So my goal is to uh, like do that initial setup with webhooks. And finally, I'll just change this message in my editor and do a git push. And that should by itself update my app in the Kates cluster. So for that, we need to set up the automated builds in Docker Hub. You can do that by just going to create an automated build. Now you can either link your GitHub or Bitbucket account. I have already linked my uh, GitHub account. Yeah, so over here you can choose any of your existing repositories. And that's exactly what I've done to create this automated build M registry slash Q. Uh, this, this is the GitHub repository that runs the app that I just showed you over here. So now over here, under build settings, you can define a certain set of rules which decide how your image tags will be named. I'll just get back to these in a second. And over here, this is the webhooks tab. This is where you'll add your callback URL. So let me create that. So 
So I'm going to provide the name and the namespace of my deployment that I want to update. And this environment ID, it's nothing. It's um, So within Rancher, there are different environments for different clusters. So since I'm using the existing framework, I'll be providing that environment ID to know which cluster I'm working on. So let me create it. And although, um, OK, so I'm in this environment. If I go to the webhooks page, it will show me that this is the webhook that I just created, Kate's KubeCon. That's what I had named it. And this is the trigger or like the callback URL. Within the code, we call it trigger URL because it triggers an action. So I'm going to copy this and add it to Docker Hub as my webhook. So this v1 webhooks endpoint, it corresponds to that execute function that I'd shown you in the code snippet that will actually trigger some action. Now that is done, and yeah. Now this is my app. I'm going to update the code. OK, so let me just change this message to OK, so I'm going to uh, push my changes. I'm going to create a tag for it. OK, so the git push has taken place. and. If our pipeline is working correctly, I won't need to do anything else for my app in the case cluster to get updated. So let's go to our uh, Docker Hub automated build. And under build details, you can see that it has already started building a new tag. If I click on it, it is using this Docker file. Now this automated build is only possible if you are uh, providing a Docker file in your repository. So in this, I'm just using the Golang Alpine image. It's relatively lighter. And I'm copying my code, and I'm building the code uh, using the Docker file itself, because I don't want any compatibility mismatch issues, like some OSX binary running on Linux or so on. Also, I'm going to uh, run, this, <laughs> run this command. It just keeps doing, uh, it just keeps running get pods every 0.5 seconds. The reason I'm doing this is, I'm hoping we'll be able to see the rolling update take place, like one pod getting terminated, one pod getting created in its place, and so on. Usually, these updates take place very fast within a case. So we, oh, uh, I was thinking we might not be able to catch those actions using this command, but we can. So as you can see, this pod, uh, which was running earlier, it's getting terminated now. And in its place, we can see, uh, well, two pods are in container creating state. That's because we saw that four pods are allowed at the max to be scheduled. So one of these pods is going to take the place of this LVWG7 pod. And I think this goes on for a while. Yeah, right now we have four pods running, and then two pods are getting terminated. So this process will go on. I'm just going to run my kubectl get pods command again. OK, and as you can see, all three previous pods have been deleted, and their place has been taken by these three new pods. All of them are running now, and they have just been created a few seconds back. So they are new pods with the new app. So this is done. We saw the rolling update actually take place, one pod terminating, one pod creating. And to make sure that our app is actually updated, I am just going to go to the browser, and I'm going to refresh this, and I hope that it prints the new message that I had changed. And it does. So this is the new message that I had added. Hello, KubeCon people. And so our app has been updated. Without me having to do anything, I just had to do a git push, and that's all. That set off the pipeline. So oops, this pipeline is done. And the demo is also done. So 
Thank you. My, my, my Twitter handle is Rajeshree underscore 28, and I'm on GitHub as well. And if you have any questions, yeah? Right. So yeah, Jenkins. Yeah, Jenkins has continuous delivery. Like it will build your new image and all. And uh, I think you can also, uh, like you were saying, maybe add scripts to do that. Uh, but uh, like I was using this webhook receiver because you will need to like specify what deployment you are dealing with. You need to specify your cube config. Uh, maybe every time the job is being built. And so an easier way to do this is if you are just running a microservice which already takes, like accepts your kube config, you only have to do anything extra. So you can use Jenkins for building your image and that can, sorry, yeah? Yeah? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. So uh, yeah, I'm familiar with Jenkins. Like uh, you can have automated builds and you can have webhooks as well. Like they will notify you when something has happened. But uh, for the receiver part, I was not sure if you can provide your cube config and like execute all those commands. But yeah, the idea is to just have this automated like a deployment pipeline in place. You can replace these components with anything. So that's why at the beginning I had just shown some image registry and something to trigger trigger that update. So this is one way to do it if, yeah. Yeah? You mentioned uh, in, from the beginning of the talk that you, you have multiple web frameworks that could be used. Uh, you mentioned, you say, OK, I decided to use this particular implementation. Did you, did you have a list of, of the, the, the framework that we could use for receiving and implementing your listener? Uh, so I don't have, uh, so I meant that in the webhook framework, there were a few other drivers that like do similar actions. But I'm not aware, like there might be other frameworks, but the framework that I'm using, it's it's on GitHub and maybe you can take a look at that. So if that works. Uh, slide, uh, no, I, like it's available on that uh, conf, but yeah, I can put it on GitHub as well. Yeah. I guess that, oh yeah, sorry. No, it can, uh, so as I said, it can work anywhere. The reason I put it in the Rancho's framework is we already had that framework in place. So it just became easier. So, um, well, the, right, yeah. So over here, if I go to my cluster, I've already set up access control. And uh, like, well, this cluster is running in Rancho, so it's using Rancho's access control. But I believe with, uh, I'm not so sure, but I believe with like RBAC, you will be able to handle that. Yeah. Uh, so I have just uh, I've created API keys, and while creating the webhook, I'm passing this API key that have been created for my account. Yeah. Okay. So Docker registries, we are adding support for that, but I believe it shouldn't be that difficult. I like I haven't taken a look at it, but yeah, we uh, we were planning on working on that. Yeah. Uh, so he was saying that they have been using Spinnaker for uh, updating the deployment, but it doesn't support insecure registries. And if this can be used for that, yeah. yeah? Yeah, yeah, we do have testing stages. Now the thing is, it's it's like a sample pipeline that I showed, but 
you can modify it with like as i said replacing the components or adding new stages for adding testing and all so yeah blue green deployment now yeah this is just using the built in kubernetes resource that like i uh, deployment resource and in the documentation i didn't see blue green as an option so yeah yeah yeah. Oh right. I, I think I uh, I think I forgot to cover that. So I was just going to go over this. Yeah. So uh, like I think yeah. As you can see over here, Docker Hub itself tells us that this like just leaving it blank will target all tags. Yeah, so the tag name is uh, just prepended with release hyphen. And as you can see over here, the tag that I had pushed was oh, Kubecon. Uh, yeah, and so it tagged it as, yeah. Yeah, it just used that, it uses that. Okay, I guess that's, that's it. So thank you. <laughs> Thanks.